five, four, command engine start, two, one, take <laughs> Beautiful liftoff from our launch site one in West Texas. You can follow along as she gains speed in the bottom left corner of your screen. There's the speedometer, altimeter in the middle there. First milestone on her trip to space, max Q. That's when the, the dynamic pressure on the vehicle is at its maximum, the toughest point in flight for the vehicle. And max Q is confirmed. All right, right about this time in your flight, you know, on ascent, you're going to max at about three Gs. We've noted it before, the max Gs that you pull as an astronaut on New Shepard actually is on descent. So here on, on ascent, it's about three Gs, and it comes on gradually as you go faster and get higher up there. Until, of course, main engine cutoff and separation, and that is when you get to feel those beautiful zero Gs. We're waiting for that here. Next stops, Miko and separation. Coming up here on Miko, main engine cutoff. So far, a clean burn from our BE3 engine. There it is, main engine cutoff. All right, appears we have uh, lost the link to the J-Layer. So far, though, everything appears to be nominal. So far, what we have seen, a clean liftoff. Uh, we did have uh, max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is essentially for the rocket the hardest point in the flight. And then uh, we had uh, main engine cutoff. And now, as you can see, separation. Here we've got our uh, infrared camera, especially on the left side. As you've seen earlier in the, in the show, it is a little hazy down there in Texas, so we are going to rely on multiple cameras here as the vehicle continues its ascent towards space. We have passed over just about here the Carmen line. There it is, 100 kilometers or about 328,000 feet. If you were inside there, Patrick, you will become a, an astronaut. And we're just waiting for the two craft to hit their apogee. You'll know they've hit apogee when the speed hits zero in the bottom left corner of your screen. There it is, Apogee, just at about 346,000 feet. Of course, we're going to have official stats for you after the flight via Twitter, but so far, so good, Patrick. Looks to be a nominal flight of New Shepard. You see the booster on the right and the capsule on the left. This is when they've begun their descent. As we've seen in the past, obviously, the booster is going to beat the capsule down to Earth as it's more aerodynamically, better aerodynamically shaped. Mm -hmm.
And thank you again, everybody, for joining us live for New Shepard's 15th flight to space. We are five minutes into what appears to be so far a nominal flight for New Shepard. We, of course, preceded the launch by what appears to be a uh, perfectly executed astronaut experience rehearsal. While there are no astronauts on board today, that was a critical step towards our march towards first human flight. All right, we've picked up our long range cameras again. There you see the booster in the bottom of the screen and the capsule on the top. At this point, the booster is re-entering the atmosphere. It means it's going to have air pressure against which those aerodynamic surfaces Patrick and I were walking you through can push against to, to guide the rocket back to its landing pad. And to think this rocket will have peaked at a almost Mach 4 and it's, by the time it touches down, it's just going to touch down at about 8 kilometers per hour or 5 uh, miles per hour. So relatively speaking, a nice soft landing. Critical, as we talked about reusability, the softer the landing, the quicker you can turn it around, right? You're not jostling the mm -hmm. rocket. You're not jostling the hardware. You want to be able to flip it around nice and quickly. So there you see the aft fins. We also call them the pie fins because they're shaped like pie wedges. All right, there go the drag brakes. And there you see all the speed leading off of the, off of the vehicle and waiting for our BE3 engine to relight. There it goes. Landing gear deployed. Oh, look at that smooth landing. And touchdown. Welcome back, New Shepard. Oh, my God. What a beautiful landing, I right? think that was one of the smoothest landings I've seen of this rock. It almost looks unreal. Right? It looks like CGI. I know some of you on the, on the Internet seem to think that. Believe me, that <laughs> is a reusable rocket that takes off and lands. What a beautiful landing. It looks like it's ready to go again. Yeah, yeah just, you know, put in those drag brakes, put in the wedge fins, fuel her up. Let's go again. But until then, the show is not over. We do have the crew capsule here. On board, we have Mannequin Skywalker, as well as a couple of payload lockers filled with postcards from Club for the Future, from students from around the world. We are waiting to see the drogue chutes come out. They will be followed by the main parachutes. And a little wink from one of those big, beautiful windows. Look at that. There go the drogues. And here come the mains. All three parachutes are out. We're looking for full inflation, and there they go. I love that. So far, so good, a nominal launch Nominal landing for the booster. We're waiting for the crew capsule to come into land. We're at about 1,600 feet to go. And a nice smooth descent at about 16 or so miles per hour. Just at about 25 or so kilometers per hour. That is a nice smooth descent. There's the valley of our West Texas launch site. Launch site one, as we call it. What a day so far, Patrick, let me tell you. Now, at 800 feet to go here, we should remind everybody that we do have the, uh, the retro thrust system that kicks on just in the last moment. Basically, it just creates a nice air cushion for the capsule so that if you 
next time, hopefully, you know, when you and I are up on <laughs> in that capsule one day, we are going to be uh, getting a nice air cushion underneath the capsule. And touchdown. Oh, it was beautiful. Absolutely spectacular. Patrick, I told you it was going to be worth the wait. Look at that. <laughs> Definitely. I love you. So you, you can just see it just as it lands. You see that puff of air and it kicks up all that dust, but it's just such a gentle landing right there. A beautiful launch and landing for both the crew capsule and the booster. Team Blue, congratulations to all of you. What a day. You should be so proud. And again, Patrick, soon, you know, if you're an astronaut on board, that is going to be a ride of a lifetime. Cannot wait to check out those onboard cameras to see the views that Mannequin Skywalker had today. Man, Just he gets to have all the fun, gets to go everywhere. I know, that guy. <laughs> Jeez. Now, to bring it all right back around, right, we started the day, you know, as exciting as this launch is, we actually started with, uh, you know, the astronaut rehearsal is sort of on top of the normal launch preparation. And now we're going to bring it all back. Uh, those a same stand-in astronauts are going to go back out to the capsule. Uh, once we open the hatch, they're actually going to get in and we're going to practice and, and rehearse, ex essentially getting the astronauts out safely, getting them back into the van, have them reunite with their loved ones. And that's when they would go off and celebrate this sort of incredible experience they would have just had. So, um, you know, I, I can I can tell you that when we've done this in rehearsals and the people have just been sitting out there when this has just happened, you know, they just get emotional. Even just sitting in at the very end, they get emotional. I can only imagine what it'd be like to actually fly and, and get land and have it's, that happen. We see it time and time again. You saw a little bit, obviously, we didn't have the audio from the, from the safety shelter earlier today, but, you know, seeing the reactions of our stand-in astronauts from having done the rehearsal, they get super, you know, psyched and worked up as they should, right? And then same thing, as you just mentioned, when they come out of the capsule, it is, you know, they, we put them in, but then they come out again and it's just this elation. And yeah. to, to think, you know, next time, you know, it's coming up soon, when we start, com you know, putting people in that capsule, you compound it with a launch to space and back? Ugh. With, a, with a, a boat full of adrenaline, you better believe they are going to be absolutely psyched and, and ready to, uh, to celebrate. Absolutely. Well, so the recovery uh, process is underway. It goes like this. So since the capsule has landed, we do have the recovery team, uh, which includes a couple of lead vehicles, safety vehicles, and, of course, our crew member seven. They are quickly traveling out to the landing site. Now, this team's job, uh, if there are astronauts on board, is to ensure that the astronauts safely exit the capsule. The astronaut families, as Patrick mentioned, in parallel are on their way, uh, would be on their way to come welcome our astronauts. Now, once the astronauts would step out of the capsule, newly minted an uh -huh. astronaut, as we mentioned, it is time to celebrate. Now, Simultaneously, we also have another team that is heading out to the booster to save the vehicle and get it back to the barn. I mean, we, we joked about the quick turnaround. Obviously, we're not flying again today, but it's uh, the, the keeping the costs of the space flight down. You have to work on the operations, get those tight, get them quick to be able to reuse the, reuse the vehicle as much and as quickly as possible. Absolutely. That asset turnaround is absolutely key there. And again, the point of today's flight was to mimic the astronaut uh, experience profile under real launch conditions, right? Astronaut loading is complex. Uh, launch is complex. Doing them both together is super complex. And, and uh, get, doing them well, and you saw that happen today, is going to be a huge step forward. Patrick, what a great day. Actually, while we've got a moment, why don't we check out some of the highlights from today's launch and landing? So we had New Shepard on the pad there, a nice ignition. And a clean look, lift off, look her go. That rumble, you can see it in the cameras and when you're down there in Texas, the whole valley feels like it's shaking when that 110,000 pounds of thrust is lit underneath the, uh, underneath the engine. Patrick, this is 
is one of my favorite angles. It's very reminiscent of, you know, the Saturn V taking off from the pad uh, during the Apollo days. Absolutely. Super, you know, super reminiscent, super vintage look. Now, this angle right here is one you would not have seen back in the Apollo days. But this is the kind of the cool thing about having these drones up there. So you can get these beautiful shots of the rocket just going by as it's flying up. So close you can touch it, right? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here comes the booster back for its soft landing. Again, Patrick, I honestly, I think this is one of the smoothest, most controlled landings I've seen from this rocket. It makes it look easy. <laughs> it's like it's just dangling from a string. And that's one of the benefits of having such controllability in the engine is you can really sort of dial that thrust in and ease your way down onto the launch pad. Exactly, exactly. And talking about the, you know, we were talking earlier about the lessons that we're taking from New Shepard and, and pulling into New Glenn, that throttle ability on the engines is critical. And then last but not least, of course, our capsule with a nice air cushioned landing. And you can see, actually, the, the parachute's dropping pretty close to the capsule, meaning there's not too much wind there out on the ground today, which is beautiful. And now live shots from the recovery team that are out there. You can mm -hmm. also see, uh, again, we're in preparation of bringing the stand-in astronauts back. We're going to get them into the capsule so that we can practice the egress and taking out of the, the, the astronauts uh, from the capsule. Again, coming to you soon. This has been such a critical step, this astronaut experience rehearsal in the march towards human spaceflight. Let's just take a look here, setting up the stairs. It's, it's a couple feet off. It's mm -hmm. about a meter from the, from the ground up to the, up to the hatch itself. So making sure they've got a nice, comfortable step out. Yeah onto the desert floor. I'm sure my heart would have been beating so heavily <laughs> through this. You know, I might be a little wobbly on my feet coming out of this thing, just having been literally up in space like just a few minutes ago. Just incredible feeling, I can imagine. Cannot wait. Seven Kevin Sprogue there in the, uh, in the blue coveralls. He's done, an, he's done an incredible job as well as Sarah Knights, our crew member seven. All right, some mission recap statistics here. These are unofficial. We will have the official ones after the flight. Maximum ascent velocity, 3,615 kilometers per hour. Crew capsule apogee, its highest point in flight, 106,021 meters. Mission start time, 11.51 a.m. Central Daylight Time and mission elapsed time, 10 minutes and 27 seconds. Just an incredible day. Very cool, very cool. And to commemorate today's launch, you can definitely pick up some of our official uh, NS15 mission patches and other really cool swag from our shop. And you can go to shop.blueorigin.com to do that. Um, there's a lot of cool things out there. I saw the mission patch earlier. It has the, you know, the silhouette of the four, you know, stand-ins there. It's, uh, it's extremely cool. Yeah, there we go. I, you know, I think Gary is the one on the left there. Yeah, maybe. exactly, I'm not sure. exactly. <laughs> but that's a, it's a cool one. I'm definitely picking up one of those right after this. Fantastic. So with that, Patrick, it is time to close out the show. Thank you so much for being my co-host. Always my pleasure. Thank a you for A wonderful launch. As I told you, worth the wait. Worth the wait for all of you as well. Thank you for staying with us for the whole flight. New Shepard's 15th flight to space and back. Please follow us on Twitter and Instagram for all the latest updates. And please continue to stay safe out there. Until our next launch, as always, for Dottam Ferociter.